I'm Jo Fay, and this is a Swiss Info podcast. Swiss Info is the multilingual and international public media company of Switzerland. Our Swiss Connection Science podcast is currently residing in Silicon Valley in California. Today we're hearing about Swiss startups and how they're trying to learn from the American way of pitching and selling their products to investors. More than 150 Swiss startups have received a boost from California entrepreneurship, and three of them are already worth $1 billion. It's a source of pride for Swissnex, the Swiss global network connecting Switzerland and the world in education, research and innovation. Today, Marc-André talks to Emilia Paquier, director of Swissnex in San Francisco. Marc-André, can you tell me why you decided to meet her? Well, I really wanted to understand what Swissnex is doing, actually. And um, Emilia is uh, 35. She's a very energetic person. Uh, pleasant young woman, uh, really a great fan to meet her and to talk in French. Mm -hmm. The only time in the trip Uh I could uh, speak in French was with with her. She's uh, from La Gruyère, this region, uh, cheese production region. La Gruyère, the famous cheese place, yeah. And um, she uh, has been before uh, a a personal advisor to uh, Alain Berset, when he was a uh, 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 minister, health minister, and, and also a president of the confederation. And, uh, well, she showed me what Swissnex is doing. I, if I must summarize it in one sentence, they welcome Swiss starts up um, to take a lesson of Californian efficiency. Mm, very interesting. Th- this is my... my, my uh, my interpretation of the fact. So these people uh, go there for 10 days and learn about how to pitch your idea oh. in front in, of, of an investor. And this is not a legend, and she says it, and you will hear it in the podcast. You have two minutes to convince. So you must not tell only, I have a good product. This is Swiss made. This is well engineered. This is very uh, long lasting. You have to explain the investor why your product will change the world and it is, is to be spread uh, worldwide. And uh, what is impressive is that in 18 years of uh, this, uh, these courses, these travels, um, three unicorns have emerged from uh, Swissnex. Brilliant. And just in case there's someone's listening who doesn't know what a unicorn is, what is that? Unic- uh, Unicorn is a, is a, a company that is uh, worth at least $1 billion. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a really big achievement. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, fa- to have the details of what these three unicorns are, you must you have to read the story. Mm, a plug I- there for our website, <laughs> swissinfo.ch, but keep listening first. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, let's uh, listen to what she has to say. And just as a note, uh, obviously, Marc Andre and Emilia spoke in French, as he mentioned before. Uh, so this conversation has been dubbed. Bonjour, Emilia Paquier. Hello, I'm Emilia Paquier. I'm the director of Swissnex in San Francisco. Switzerland often ranks number one in innovation. We're very proud of that. But aren't things a bit more innovative here? La Suisse est très très douée pour tout ce qui est Switzerland is very good at making products of excellent quality, but it's true that sometimes when their product is not excellent, the Swiss don't dare go to the market. And here it's the opposite. We're not really sure if it works, but we go for it. We try, we go for it, and once we have feedback, we can improve. Switzerland as a country compares well with Silicon Valley in terms of its economy, research and creativity. Of course, if you take the United States as a country, it's so gigantic that it can't really be compared to Switzerland. 
Je pense que les Suisses sont particulièrement bons. I think the Swiss are particularly good in all areas of artificial intelligence, technology and robotics. They have some of the best universities in the world, the two federal institutes of technology. What you see when you have startups coming here, most of them from these federal institutes, is that they sometimes lack a little bit of vision, they lack good marketing. What's missing is not selling the pen you've developed, but selling the idea behind it. Selling why it's going to have an impact on society, why it's going to change the world. Isn't it also a question of funding? Isn't it easier to get funding here? There's a virtuous circle that's been set up in Silicon Valley, which is quite interesting. What we're seeing is that there are a huge number of entrepreneurs who are successful. Then they sell their companies, their startups, make money, and use that money to reinvest in new startups. Pour le réinvestir dans de nouvelles start-up. Et en fait, ce cercle. Fait in fact, that's why there's more and more capital and more and more investors here. It's a circle that's starting to arrive in Switzerland, but it's not there yet. It's a question of investment. Here, if I'm not mistaken, in 2022, 66 billion was invested in start-ups. In Switzerland, it's 4 billion. But of course, there is money in Switzerland that just shows you the difference. A lot of startups still come here. After the pandemic, there was a lot of discussion about whether Silicon Valley is still what it was or whether there is another hub now. We heard mention of Austin, Texas. You hear a lot about Los Angeles and Seattle. But when you talk to the entrepreneurs who create startups, to be able to operate, they need capital. And the capital is still here. When you go to a venture capitalist and you say, this is Swiss made, does that carry any weight? That's a good question. Quite sincerely, I think that this information is not enough. It's no longer enough. What investors are looking for is strong focus and a strong emphasis on the personality of the founder. They want people who are committed to their project, who know how to sell it, and who go beyond being good engineers who know how to make a good product, a good phone or something. They really want someone who comes along and says, we're doing artificial intelligence, but in fact, our product will soon totally revolutionize society because of A, B and C. And I think that Switzerland has a really good card to play because it's a country that's doing very good research. And it's also very cosmopolitan, very open to the outside world. I think that's a very important factor for innovation. This is something we notice here too with the people who come to San Francisco. There are some who stay, of course. But for many, they're just passing through. They're here for four years, for eight years. In my opinion, there are two trends that are picking up very strongly now, which are going to attract a huge amount of capital. One is artificial intelligence. What's being created with these tools is really going to change our society. And the other, I think, is climate technologies. What allowed Silicon Valley to blossom, as we know it, is this concentration of industry, research and capital in a fairly small area. These were the first industrial parks, and I have the impression, or at least a theory, that something quite similar is happening in the field of climate technologies. For instance, Stanford University has received a billion dollar donation to create a new sustainability school. To date, it's the largest donation ever made to create a new school. And where did it come from? One billion dollars from John Doerr, a major and well-known investor. It's good when there's investment in research and public policy aligns with it. We see this in particular with the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act. This package was for everything to do with carbon capture and climate change. 
So when private funds, public policies and research align and it all comes together in a concentrated ecosystem, it allows for great general acceleration. And I suspect and even hope that this will happen here because that's what I think the world needs. I've seen your Hall of Fame. What do you have to say about that? Are you proud of it? Yes, I'm very proud. It all started 20 years ago. And in 20 years, the ecosystem in Switzerland has changed enormously too. There are more and more startups. There's a lot more investment. I'm proud of these three unicorns and of the over 150 startups that we have supported over the last 13 years since we started working with startups. It's great to see them evolve. I'm also talking about my personal experience. I see them coming here, passionate entrepreneurs with products that work well, very good quality and very good ideas. You spend time with them over two weeks in workshops where they learn all about the Silicon Valley mindset and how to present their ideas, how to do a pitch. Here it's really all about pitching. You have two minutes to sell your idea. This is something you can't learn sitting in front of your computer. You just can't. And this is just the beginning. There's a lot of competition. So you can't rest on your laurels. You have to stay ahead of the game, always ready for the next thing. If I'm not mistaken, you've been in California for a year now. Was it a dream for you to come here? For me, California is a symbol of freedom, of innovation, new ideas, and all that sort of thing. And it's true, when I got the job, there was a bit of that dream side. Of course, San Francisco has both sides. When you talk to people in the neighborhood or in the city, everyone tells you that the city works in cycles. It's a cyclical city, meaning that when there's a gold rush, everyone comes here. And then there's a dip, the bottom of the wave, followed by another tech boom, and so on. The pandemic was very, very difficult. But now, if you look at artificial intelligence, which is the subject everyone is talking about, where does it come from? Again, it started here. So it's very likely to happen again. A question from an old hippie. Was the summer of love a high or a low? I think the summer of love was a high. There are some very interesting theses on the fact that without this counterculture, Silicon Valley wouldn't have been able to flourish in the way it did. Because this counterculture, with this idea of decentralizing power to a certain extent, this do-it-yourself aspect, has also enabled this creativity in the tech world. In fact, it's allowed us to have visions about more than just creating a computer, but saying, we're creating a machine that will one day be in everybody's homes. It was totally revolutionary to think like that at the time. Thank you, Marc-André. Find more on this story and the Swiss unicorns on our English website. Just go to swissinfo.ch and search for unicorns. And if you enjoyed listening, make sure to subscribe to The Swiss Connection so you don't miss next week's episode. Marc Andre will be talking to Cloud Selweger, one of the heads of industrial design at Google, about technology, people, and nature. Today's episode was recorded and edited by our science and video journalist, Michele Andina. For more content, visit our website, swissinfo.ch. I'm Joe Fay. Thanks for listening. Hello, I'm Imogen Folks from Swiss Info's Inside Geneva podcast. On February 24th, 2022, Russia attacked Ukraine. The invasion caused Europe's largest refugee crisis since World War II. And during the year-long conflict, 
tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands of people, soldiers and civilians, have been killed. Over the past year, a number of episodes of Inside Geneva have looked at the heavy humanitarian toll of the war and its wider implications for the world. We've been joined by historians and international human rights experts to ask about the background to the invasion. We've talked to major UN aid agencies about how the war in Ukraine is impacting other humanitarian crises. And we've asked if sanctions or war crimes investigations can stop or at least limit this conflict. If you're particularly concerned by the war in Ukraine, do listen to these episodes. You can find Inside Geneva, free to listen, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google and all your usual podcast apps.